All right. Yeah, let me go ahead a little bit about and discuss mo something more on Hartree Fock. Okay, so some more on Hartree Fock. So let us see what, what more we can we want to do. And we have particularly discussed RHF. I want to again tell you we have particularly discussed restricted Hartree Fock determinant, and we have mentioned that this is a singlet state. Okay. What is a singlet state or a triplet state means? It is an eigenfunction of A square okay. and one of the S operator conveniently it is taken as SZ just like angular momentum. Okay. So, you have for eigenfunction of sorry A square, for eigenfunction of A square you have square root S, S into S plus 1 over h cross and for sz you have just ms h cross okay so these are the two uh, um, eigen function eigen values that you get and when you do this s square the capital s or s that comes in the s into s plus 1 is zero so that is why it is called singlet okay now there is an important theorem for a determinant i might have already mentioned but again i should mention this when is a determinant spin adapted? So, this is called spin adapted. So, what is a spin adapted state? The spin adapted determinant or a state is an eigenfunction of S square and is one of the S operators. So, that is conveniently SZ operator. Okay. So, now what we want to say, ask the question, when is a determinant spin adapted? I hope the question is clear. When is it an eigenfunction of S square and SZ operator. Again, this proof is very elaborate, but the re, but the result is very important. So I want to make the result very clear. So when you discuss spin adaptation, remember we have to worry about what kind of spin it is. So how many of them are alpha spin? How many of them are beta spins? So that is very important. So obviously we have to write not in terms of general spin orbitals, but a space part and alpha and beta attached. So let's assume that in a determinant. We have n alpha spin orbitals and this is a very general statement that we are making, n alpha spin orbitals of alpha spin. I hope the, the point is very clear. Okay? And n beta number of spin orbitals which are beta spin such that of course n is equal to n alpha plus n beta. That is very clear because you have only two spins. So you have n spin orbitals. I am categorizing the n spin orbitals as some with alpha spin, some with beta spin. Okay? That is what is that is the only possibility that you have, right? And let us say that n alpha number is alpha spin, n beta number is beta spin, such that the total n is n alpha plus n beta. Is it clear? So, this is a very general statement I am making in a determinant or a single determinant. When I have got chi 1, chi 2 to chi n, if I analyze them. For RHF, of course, it is very clear that n alpha is equal to n beta, correct? And each of them is n by 2, half of n. So, it n is equal to n alpha plus n beta. So, both the, the number, two numbers are identical for RHF. But in general, I can have n alpha number of alpha spin and n beta number of beta spin. Then there is a theorem which states, which is the following theorem. Then let us assume one of them is may be larger than the other. So, n alpha is greater than or equal to n beta, let us say. I mean it could be the other way around. Of course, equality equal to beta is also assumed. So, it is either greater or equal to n beta. Then the theorem says that the determinant will be spin adapted. Again, I, 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 I told you what is spin adapted. Spin adapted means it is an eigenfunction of S square and SZ. So, that is spin adaptation. Okay? For singlet, the value of S is 0, but any triplet is also spin adapted. So, a determinant will be spin adapted if and only if, and this is very important, if and only if 
the lower number, so let us say here, n beta number of space orbitals or n beta space orbitals with beta spin, which means those pen or space orbitals which have beta spin, clearly those numbers are n beta are subset or fully subsumed of uh, subsumed in or of whatever of the n alpha space orbitals with alpha spin, which means the lower number of spin orbitals have this space part. The space parts are complete subset of the larger n alpha space part. I hope that point is clear. Now, what do you mean by subset? I hope you understand. So, for example, let me give a give an example. So, 1s alpha, a determinant, not necessarily RHF, 1s alpha, sorry, 2s alpha, 1s beta, 3 electron. Does this follow this? Sorry, 2s uh, alpha. Yeah. Does this follow this? Yes, because your number of space orbital for beta part is 1s which is completely contained here. For alpha you have 1s, 2s, you have 1s. So this ticks this box. So this is a subset of this. That means this number of space orbitals have to be already contained in the n alpha space orbitals list. So they are common. In addition, of course, n alpha will have more because n alpha is greater than or equal to n beta. In which case, determinant will be spin adapted and the value of s and the value of s will then be n alpha minus n beta tell me the value like for example here by 2 okay and of course ms value will exactly same thing with h cross whatever so this is the strict theorem so I can look at any determinant, their space and spin parts, which is alpha, which is beta, and then as, then make a comment if it is spin adapted or not. If it is spin adapted, this will be the final A state. So then I can say if it is singlet, doublet, triplet, everything for A determinant. So for example, I give you a determinant, 1s alpha, 2s alpha, and some 1s prime alpha, okay, 1s beta. 1s prime alpha or even 2s alpha, does not matter. Is this spin adapted? Why? Yes, answer is yes, because this, please check n beta, 1s is contained here. So I wrote something else initially, so I wrote 1s alpha, 2s beta, 1s prime alpha. Is this spin adapted? No, because so I hope you will be able to find out from this spin, from the space part and the spins, one which is spin adapted, one which is not spin adapted. So if I have in general, if I have in general orbitals, uh, a determinant of this kind, phi 1 alpha, phi 2 alpha, phi 3 beta, phi 4 alpha, let us say or phi 4 beta where phi 1, phi 2, phi 3, phi 4 are different, then it is not spin adapted. For spin adaptation, in this case, it is essential that phi 3 and because there are two beta orbitals, there are two alpha orbitals, they have to be identical, there is no other option. So phi 3 and phi 4 must be same as phi 1 and phi 2. Of course, in this case, we know it is a beryllium like system. So 1s alpha, 1s beta, 2s alpha, 2s beta. So obviously it is spin adapted. I had just written it, it juxtaposed it, does not matter. So that is a beryllium system. So it will be singlet or nothing here, okay. RHF by construction is spin adapted. Now you know that we have made sure that the alpha spin orbitals are identical as the beta spin orbitals. So the space part of the alpha spin orbitals is identical to the beta. So it is by construction spin adapted and of course S is 0 which means it is a singlet state. Is it clear? 
all right with this i now present to you two different types of heart report which are very useful particularly when you go to the open shell systems or sometimes a more general closed shell systems or open shells which we have not discussed please remember our discussion has been based on strictly on closed shell system which is restricted heart reform but there are some closed shell system which does not satisfy this where i cannot make this satis satis satisfied so in which case i have to worry about more general systems and also open cell systems i am not going to discuss more about it but before i leave heart fog i must say that there are other kinds of heart fogs so one of them is called the restricted open cell heart fog again many of you might have heard this restricted open cell heart fog so this is called rohf and the second is unrestricted heart report, which is UH and of course what we have done so far is restricted heart report. So far what we have done is only RHF but there are two important heart reforms which exist. One is restricted but can be applied for open shell ROHF, another is completely unrestricted. So, what is the difference between these two is what I will explain now. Obviously, by very name, you can see restricted open cell means it is applied to open shells. If it is applied to open shells, the first important thing is that N alpha is not equal to N beta. That is the first thing that we have learned because closed shell is N alpha equal to N beta. Of course, open shell can have N alpha, number of alpha and beta electrons same, but then they will have different other different properties. So, let us say now for a particular case that we are discussing N alpha is greater than N beta. Okay? So, then the restricted open cell heart reform is precisely one which fulfills this condition for spin adaptation. That means the number of N beta space orbitals is or constitute a subset. of an alpha space orbital. So, this is your ROHF. So, I will give examples and hence it is of course spin adapted by this theorem. Right? Now that I have already stated the theorem, it is very clear that it is spin adapted. So, an alpha may be greater than B n beta, it is greater than n beta. But then the n beta, the lower ones form a subset of this. And of course, if you write n alpha greater than equal to n beta, then ROHF const, uh, rather ROHF subsumes RHF, which means RHF is a special case of ROHF. So, there is nothing great about what we have done. In fact, if you write this as n alpha greater than or equal to n beta and write this same statement, then the ROHF, RHF is a special example of ROHF because n alpha equal to n beta is RHF. Is it clear? But in general, when you write ROHF, we assume that the N alpha and N beta are different. So, I am specifically writing that this N, N beta constitute a subset of N alpha space orbital. So, let us say assume I have 4 electrons, 3 of them alpha, 1 of them beta. So, how do I write this? So, 4 electron, so I must have 1 as alpha, I can have 2s alpha, I can have 3s alpha, but the beta must be 1 of these 3. So, it let us say 1 is beta. That is ROHF. I have 4 electrons. So, alphas must have different space orbitals by the Pauli principle, of course. But the beta space orbital must be one of these 3. Okay? So, if I write in a very simple chemist notation, so this is 1s, this is 2s, this is 3s, then 1s is doubly occupied, this is singly occupied. So, that is your ROHF. And clearly, you can see that is a triplet. If I write the diagram, you can immediately see it is a triplet and it shows here because n alpha is 3, n beta is 1, so s equal to 1 and it is a triplet state. Okay? And that is the diagram that it shows. So, it means that whatever is the lower number 
must be contained in the space orbitals with higher numbers. Then it is called ROHF and I can use now this for open cell system because I can do triplet for example. I can do doublet, so 3 electron, that is a doublet, right? It is ROHF, yes. Yes, uh, no problem. It will be an excited state. Yeah, so it will have this, it will have a structure like this if it is 2s beta. It is still a triplet, but it is not an excite, it is not a ground. Among the triplet, this is not a ground state. That is a different matter. We are not talking about which is the lowest energy. Yes. Huh? Oh, why we need spin adapted? Because our Hamiltonian it commutes with a square. Very simple. So, our Schrodinger equation solution must also be eigenfunction of a square. Very often, sometimes we cannot enforce, but that is because of the approximation. We are not exactly solving. But in doing approximations, if we can enforce it, it is obviously more desirable, okay. Just like we like to enforce all symmetry in a problem. So, spin is another symmetry. Note that the actual Hamiltonian, physical Hamiltonian commutes with a square. So, all exact wave functions are spin adaptive. It is just that because we are doing approximations, we are not taking, making attention on this. So, that is the reason we have to bring back and we have to remind ourselves, okay. On the other hand, unrestricted Hartree-Fock is of course by definition has no such restriction. So, your n beta space orbital need not be a subset of n alpha. One of them can be contained, others may not. So, it can be anything. So, here if it is let us say 1s prime beta, which means your alpha and beta are not exactly sitting here, but beta is sitting somewhere here. Call it 1s prime, which is slightly different in energy. And obviously, this is also not there. Yeah, this is a 4 electron system. So, in this case, it is not spin adapted. It is not spin adapted and you can actually see if I write this determinant. So, if I write this 4, you can immediately tell that it is not spin adapted, right? Because you will not call it triplet. But if your triplet is just count out number of alpha minus number of beta, then it is a triplet. But that is not right. You count them out when the lower numbers are already contained, which means there is a maximum double occupancy. So, what does ROHF mean? ROHF mean do as much double occupancy as possible. Whatever is open shell, whatever you cannot doubly occupy, leave them all in the same spin. So, for example, again I come back to ROHF. ROHF, so let us say I have 3, I said. 4, 1, if I decide that there are 3 alpha spins and 1 beta spins, then what is the maximum double occupancy I can do? 1, because I have only 1 beta spin. So, 1 space orbital I can doubly occupy. Leave the rest to with the same spin. Whatever is not doubly occupied has to have the same spin. So, I can redefine ROHF in a different way. Whatever is not doubly occupied must have same spin. That is another way of looking at ROH. I, I, I decide to write it in this manner because this is strictly more right. But the consequence of this that if there are no doubly occupied orbitals, then the electrons sitting in all those orbitals must have the same spin. Then it is called ROHF. So, in a way, ROHF, ROHF is maximum double occupancy, maximum. And quite clearly, in this case, RHF is a special case of ROHF because I am doing real maximum double occupancy. I have 2 alpha, 2 beta, okay. UHF, I do not put, put any such attention. So, 2 alpha can be in 2 special orbitals, 2 beta can be in another special orbitals and hence UHF is not spin adapted. So, that is important to realize that the UHF, the unrestricted Hartree for determinant is not spin adapted and this is a special problem of UHF. At the same time, we must recognize that in terms of energy, 
the same problem if I do with UHF and ROHF or RHF whatever I am again writing ROHF and RHF in the same box because it is a special case then this energy will be lower than this energy. Why? Because in RHF and ROHF I am making a condition that the beta space part is same as the alpha space part subset in UHF I have no such condition. So what does the variational theorem say? If you have more flexibility energy will be lower. So that is interesting if you want a lower energy and that is my objective then you should better do UHF right. But the problem with UHF is that you can do not get the spin. So you have to worry about what do you want to do okay each of them is approximation of course. There is a way to get spin adaptation after doing UHF and that is called projected UHF. I will again not discuss all this but there is a there is a method which is called PUHF which means I first do UHF and from the UHF wave function I project singlet, triplet, doublet so by projection operators. So this is a high, highly mathematical in group theory also we do the same thing. So this is called PUHF which also exists in the literature. So I just thought you should know the name. So PUHF in a way is spin adapted with that projected. So this is spin adapted. So PUHF is again spin adapted. But moment you do PUHF, PUHF you lose that energy variational thing because you cannot have both because I am now not taking the full wave function I am taking a part of it. So I have lost the original part of the wave function okay. So I think this, these are some of the Hartree fogs that you should know again no more details ROHF, UHF equations are actually very easy to derive because we have the general equations the during the spin integration you should have to just take care that the alpha and beta are not same. So you can easily get an alpha spin. so but there will be two equations one for the alpha spin orbital one for the beta and do that. ROHF is somewhat more uh, difficult to understand actually UHF is actually much easier. ROHF is more difficult and ROHF is understood in many many ways. If you analyze the ROHF determinant there is actually two parts to it one is a closed part another is open part. If you notice all ROHF one is a closed part one is open part because closed part is the number of beta which is doubly occupied and the rest is open part. So many times ROHF determinant is actually said to have a closed part and an open part. So if I have, I have a determinant form which is closed so they are this are doubly occupied all of them are doubly occupied. And then you have an open part which have open part essentially means all have same spin either alpha or beta all have same spin. So this is one characteristic of all ROHF determinant. How many how much is the closed part how much is the open part that will determine your spin and that depends on also number of electrons because together it must be total number of electrons. So there is a very complicated Hartree Fock calculation for the closed part open part they are also coupled the Fock operator for the closed part Fock operator for the open part they are coupled. So ROHF uh, solutions are much more complex than UHF, UHF is actually easy okay. However I lose the spin adaptation alright. 